when we finished the last episode, I I was smashed. Really? <laughs> yeah, I was I absolutely was... trashed. You didn't seem it. You no, I, I held it together. <laughs> yeah, you did hold it together. <laughs> I was. I got into bed, and you know when things start to get a bit wobbly. Oh yeah. Wow, that's bad. Yeah, so, you know, it was the room bad. Start spinning. Yeah, that's bad. Jeez. Okay. Uh, so how much on that whiskey note, did you Hamish, drink? Yeah. On that note, what are you drinking tonight? <laughs> oh, right, <laughs> boys, tonight I have purchased something a little bit tamer, but it's still still hitting pretty well. Yeah, I've got Brooklyn Lager. Um, oh, I like that. Five point two percent. It's pretty good, I have to say. What about you, I Simon? Do like a Brooklyn Lager. So I've got a pilsner, a uh, mosaic cashmere hopped pilsner from Modern Times Brewery mm. from San Diego, and it's called Space Sailors. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a forty k army. And it is very light and very hoppy, and it's beautiful. Mm. What about you, Dan? Well, um, I've got a very classy uh, beer by the name of uh, Stella Artois. <laughs> got a <laughs> can of Stella. I do have a can of Stella. Mate. Well, I, I, I'm a big fan of these fancy beers, but I feel like for an hour-long podcast, I, I want a pint. So I've got mm, one of those pint, a... pint cans. Well, uh, that, yeah. you haven't got a white vest, so we've got nothing to worry about. No, I'm wearing a jumper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear me. Anyway. Welcome everyone back to a new episode two of Push the Point. Um, we've got quite a few things to talk about today, and Simon is the man because I'm again I'm a rambler. Simon, what are we doing? So we're going to start off with some community feedback uh, for the episode one of the podcast and some shout outs uh, for our wonderful community. We're going to just have a quick look at spoiler season. Um, I know we touched on it last time, but I think there's been a few big announcements since then. Only a couple. Um, just a couple <laughs> and then we're gonna um, we're gonna talk to uh, an outstanding member of our community and, a, and an interview for a milestone coming up later um Fiendale's library returns oh, with a, a new back. snippet from a new video <laughs> where have you been <laughs> and then we're gonna finish <laughs> and then we're gonna finish talking about uh what was actually a really fun event to be a part of when the uk took on the USA in an international event recently. Mm. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I, it's, it, I, I actually um, not. I was watching that. Episode, uh, I was watching you play Simon with uh, my baby daughter in the bath, and I thought, oh my god, I can't miss this. So we, but so I put it on the stream on my phone in the bath, and she. It was a bit weird when she was saying, "Daddy," and I was like, "No, that's not your dad." <laughs> but she says daddy so literally everything chicken pig daddy it's like nah maybe the pig but no not oh, the chicken I've got, oh. i'll save i'll save it for the uh the segment but I, i've also got some good stories about watching watching that live streamed uh on my phone but we'll we'll save that for when we get to it we'll, later in the we'll bring it full circle yeah, yeah. hamish give me some feedback right so um just to swing it round into we left the question of uh, uh, what do you think of the cold foils and and uh, uh, Adonaz replied back in the two sentences rule so he was uh, due diligent um, just like we did and his two sentences of is cold foils uh, was it cold foils a good thing or was it first edition I can't remember yeah our cold foils good for the game our cold foils well, good for is the game first edition good for the game so he said in two sentences I don't think the game would be where it is without it hype exposure debate and one of the big talking points and attractions is the cold foils and their limited availability and that was from Adonis so yeah good points and we've got and something that's fairly unrelated but it was still really good he reached out to us uh, and this was from Ed Cole uh, great podcast enjoyable listening and his two cents he thinks the first or the first edition is a good is good for the game but when done like Monarch with two with the two being quite close I'm imagining he, mean, he means the unlimited is quite close to the first edition uh, as a new player and knowing the need for some crucible of war cards to be competitive it does create a bit of a barrier yeah because yeah, we touched on that didn't we we, we did. talked about crucible of war and 
that being a barrier so it's interesting that he's picked up on that as well yeah it's an interesting one though isn't it because crucible of war is like an orphan set at the moment it hasn't got an unlimited um in a similar time time frame to the other sets and mm. it sold out when the second wave came through it sold out much quicker than i think um lss or anyone really could have anticipated mm. with a boom in population of the game so it's sort of been orphaned however a big announcement recently is that they are releasing an unlimited yeah. version of crucible at war uh, a crucible of war and it will be coming out in the summer they haven't given any more detail than that but in the summer so we look forward to that i think but he follows on so by one... saying, oh sorry but he follows on by saying that tts solves some of that but as we leave lockdown to start to play in person a lack of the key cards would have been noticed but we've, we've touched on that but he enjoys the game and we'll keep playing so it was lucky that he got a find L spring tunic and he sold oh. it to get more warrior cards for himself and i know that he sold it because he sold it to me <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was that's good one though. of the best parts of the game like you know you, you get a lucky pull like that and that can pay for your first few months of playing the game and getting the cards you need so that that can you know you pull a heart or something like that just out of the blue as simon you got you pulled a heart early on you trade it for two l's um yeah so um my my second box of uh welcome to wraith unlimited i pulled a heart and uh it was one of those moments i think hamish has got a, a, a similar moment to talk about from the last few days but mm. it's one of those moments you're looking at this rarity symbol on the card and you're like that doesn't look like any other rarity symbol i've ever seen and then you start revealing the card that's in front of you you're like oh my goodness what's going on um but yeah that that set me up with legendary equipment for my main two or three classes plus a few big generic majestic so it was it was a good a good effort top this Definitely. though right top this it was madness right there was a stream called the tcgs so it's uh, the underscore tcgs and there's a there are new uh, bunch of dudes that are streaming um i think they're doing a fair bit of pack opening but i know one of the guys called buffkin and some of the other guys that used to play an old game called warhammer champions so they gave us a lovely shout out on their stream and when they saw that they personally gave us a permission to to talk about this and it was absolutely batshit wild first box first pack e-strike heart it was like and he went oh okay oh i've got this heart oh what's this mm, oh, okay that looks all right and everyone was the whole chat went whoa whoa whoa, 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 whoa. it just exploded and he was just like i take it this card's pretty good <laughs> <laughs> i could not believe it the chat couldn't believe it we just everyone just went bananas so the tcgs joke had to check them out in the stream unfortunately they didn't have a video of watching how humbly uh unsure what they've just witnessed and i, and I just and i suppose really everyone who was a part of that was on something that you'll never ever possibly see again yeah it's the beauty of live television that oh. right there you had to be there you really did two two guys first time no idea first ever box first ever pack and it's a bloody heart <laughs> That's cr that is crazy mm. you just think like how yeah how awesome for them as well to Absolutely. then realize look back on it um one last bit of feedback and it's a bit light-hearted um but we were picked up on our first episode for saying monarch in a very un-british way what? throughout the uh, throughout the episode <laughs> I had um, heard this. and uh, we keep, apparently apparently we keep saying it in a quite american way monarch who says who, who said this he better be bloody english <laughs> no so he wasn't uh, english so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna make he was english oh okay make, uh, he was an american question effort. my britishness no i'm gonna make Brexit. a concerted effort to say monarch because that's how we say it and monarch. What, monarch 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 in all honesty though in all honesty i've been absolutely blown away by the response from people we've we've had over a hundred views of our first episode and it i know we've all been feeling the same we've mm. just been absolutely um dying to get back on in a in a session to record this second episode oh, because yeah. everything we get back from the community uh, all the feedback just drives us and it just drives us into this frenzy where we want to just come back and talk more yeah, and uh, and get through some of these big topics so thank you very much 
And on that note, we're going to move on to the big topic of the week, which is uh, developing spoiler season. We now have four new heroes. Oh my god. And they saved the best for last. I know, Trip, you had a prediction that the fourth one was going to be a new hero. Yeah, I, um, I I predicted that the fourth hero would be a new hero. I did think it was going to be a, a cleric at first, uh, as you, may, <laughs> you might have seen. Um, but I I did think... I, I, do, I doubled down on it, and I was like, well, if it's not going to be a cleric, I do think they will release a new hero. And they did, so they released Prism, the, uh, the illusionist. And, I mean... What a new hero. Oh. Absolutely fantastic. It just looks... The artwork is fantastic. The character, if you've read the, the backstory of the character, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, I, I And it just looks like a character I'd really like to play. And we talked about this last time, I think, and we were just... I really wanted to play a new class uh, as, like, the, the new... I wanted to start playing Classic Constructed a lot more, and I really wanted to play a new class. And it was just, like, LSS was, like... You know, you can have that. It's going to be the last thing we announce, but <laughs> we, we heard you, Trip, on the first point, episode one, and we're going to give you the, the class that you really oh, want. They've been listening, man. So happy. So happy to see that class get announced. Well, I don't so think we, we want to make it. I, I, I really wish I never opened my goddamn mouth because I went all. I started drinking when I was typing, saying, ah, if it's not a light neck, call me a loser. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you were like uh, record a, record someone calling me a loser. Well, and no one did. On the podcast. <laughs> no one did. No, but, no one did because it was probably either they. You all really like me, or you really all never cared. <laughs> <laughs> it was that monocle, though, wasn't it? It was. She was wearing a monocle in the uh, back. There was a bit of a short story with Bolton and this new illusionist, and we didn't know then that this was the new character. And she was wearing a a monocle, and everyone was thinking, "Oh, it's." It's going to be a hero from Welcome to Wraith and a hero from Ark. And at first it was Wizard, and then people learnt the alphabet and were like, well, it can't be a wizard. <laughs> and then it was like, oh, it's going to be a, a ranger, because poor, poor, poor ranger, they just can't catch a break. And we were like, and then they came up with, and then, then we, were, we were clutching at straws. We were like, well, she's, they're calling her an illusionist throughout this article, but it can't be a new class, can it? So she's wearing a monocle and uh, she's got some kind of glowing orb thing. Oh, it's going to be a me- me- mechanologist. I think I'm going to go uh, down so. with this alphabet thing just really was probably the highlight of this spoiler season. And going, <laughs> but it can't be this because of the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a theory a, based that on, a, on that. A regular refrain from the community. Yeah. It can't be a wizard. <laughs> can't alphabet. Be. Impossible. Um, so just while we're on that topic then I I absolutely love so far I mean there's still probably a week to go I've absolutely loved the way LSS have released the cards and and the heroes um, and their articles that they've been releasing on a regular basis on the website have just been brilliant and going from like people have been not complaining but maybe critical of the law aspects of the game on the website and how they've not been you know releasing anything and now we've got all of these articles coming out and and hero backstories coming out and it's just been a great way to interact with the spoiler season i've been really impressed with the way they've done it actually yeah yeah absolutely i was talking i was talking to my friend about this um uh, his name's steve and he's at uh he's, he's at the little house gaming store in ketchin so i was hanging out there um and I was saying that it was when we were talking about the very first bit and how like, oh, it's Levy at Shadow Brew. I was like, oh, that's not what I expected, new classes. And then it was like, chain. I was like, okay, cool. Let's all get used to this. Let's get used to this. And it's like, oh, it's Warrior. And I think they, <laughs> I think they gave us Warrior just to break us and go, oh no, more bloody Warrior. And then they were like, oh, don't worry. The next one's coming. Everyone's like, yeah, it's just going to be another one. And then they just brought it back up again to the silly heightness. I'm like, whoa, how did you do that? How did you make this so exciting? And then brought us down a, down a little bit, not down, but you know what I mean? Just our expectations and shock and surprise just was starting to wane a little bit. And everyone was really thinking they figured it out. And then, nope. It was, uh, they played us. They played us like a fiddle. Oh, they thing. sure yeah. did. They knew exactly what they were doing. I, and, and I, I agreed and I with think... my friend and said this was the best spoiler season I've ever seen from any game. So it's really good. 
they're really sticking to their like core values as a company and it really shows uh, i've been yeah again very impressed and hamish then give me your likely hero that you're going to collect first and your favorite card from the spoilers so far uh so i'm going to be collecting levia uh the shadow brute that's going to be my uh that's going to be the one i'm going to roll with uh, normally that was the original way that I would have collected stuff anyway. I, I find a, a, it used to be, well it used to be now a class, but now we should really just reference them as heroes now. Um, but we'd find, I'd find a hero, my brother would find a hero, and we just go ham and make sure our heroes are fully collected. So the same strategy applied here. So uh, it was kind of wild really. I didn't expect Runeblade because I collected Brute, Reiner, and Viserai. So when I saw <laughs> a Shadow Brute and a Shadow Runeblade, I was like, oh my god christmas came early for me but my brother needed to liaise him with with someone so um i let him uh collect chain it was always going to be shadow mate it was always going to be a shadow the light no matter who the light player was i was never going to roll that way and the best and the and the seal that made it like mwah, beautiful was seeing blasphemet and the demons just those two demons but blasphemet man that was absolutely nutty and yeah just sealed my uh just sealed my um my collection after seeing that so you'll be angling for a cold foil blasphemet token at some point then yeah uh that would be that would be lovely if that could happen but i've got to i've got to find out how where that where that is first and then i've got to find out <laughs> find out how much does it cost and i'm going to find out how much my children are worth <laughs> what about you trip Give us your uh, your expected first hero and uh, your favourite card so far. Yeah, so as I'm definitely going to play Prism. I'm going to try and get my head around that deck. It's uh, very different to what I've played in the past, but I'm really interested to, to try and make that work. I think in terms of the, the card, um, it, again, a, an illusionist card is this uh, Fanta, Phantasmaclasm, I think it is. Phantasmaclasm, which I just think or is... Or as I like to call it. Phantasmagasm. Phantasmagasm. Yeah, I was going to say Phantasmagasm. Gasm. It's just a fantastic name for a card. Um, I love the idea of this phantasm effect. I think it's really, really interesting. I just love the idea that, like, it's against certain classes. Um, you, they can just block it with one card if they've got a six power card. Um, it it just blocks it completely but some classes just can't deal with it. And I just love the, the, we've seen it in Flash and Blood before with classes like the Ranger, where they've really got an idea of the concept behind the class and the way you play the game really feels like that concept. You feel like you're loading your bow and you're shooting your bow when you're playing Azalea. And I just think this idea of these super powerful cards that if the hero is too smart, like classic illusions, if they're too smart, they overthink it and they get taken over by this illusion but if you've just got someone like rhino or brute he doesn't care he's just gonna hit you in the head whatever he doesn't care that these these demons have appeared from anywhere or these angels i should say have appeared from anywhere he's just gonna hit you over the head and just blows you up so i really like that um and i'm really looking forward to seeing if i can make that deck work in classic constructed specifically i will play bolton in blitz i will build a bolton blitz deck i just love warrior um, and I really like the idea of trying the the axe, hitting people with axes in Blitz. But I think for Classic Constructed, it's definitely going to be uh, Prism. Nice. What about you, Simon? Yeah, I, I'm looking at Bolton, actually. Having not collected Warrior so far, um, I think Bolton looks like a go-wide character where you can just apply relentless pressure. And that, I mean, having come from an Ira deck and a Katsu deck, that's, that's what I'm all about. It's just going wide four or five attacks in a chain and uh, and just pr pushing that pressure that being said i don't think it's going to be easy with the charge mechanic with this new um charging your soul mechanic it looks really interesting i think there's going to be some really interesting interactions and if i'm honest although i'm a little bit worried i don't have the warrior cards from crew um, and a lot of the warrior cards from from Welcome to Wraith either. I don't think it's going to hamper me too much. I think there's going to be a lot to do with the new cards. So I really like the way they've done that, and we've talked about that already. Um, mm, I, I'm, uh, trying I'm, to make it a bit more set specific. I'm actually really weirdly more 
back on getting excited about seeing how uh how these new classes um well the new class sorry not all but the the talents and these new heroes um kind of really shape the meta up in terms of i i think when you looked back on all the old all the older stuff right and you look at dorinthia and and katsu and, and i'm going at a classic constructed mindset not blitz um you sort of think well everyone wants to see if there's new cards right that come out for a hero i wonder what these new cards and these new cards for my heroes are actually going to be the thing that's going to elevate my the hero i want to play to deal with the ones that i struggle with right but actually it was never really the right approach to go about it and lss did go around and make the right approach instead of actually bringing new tools for heroes but they actually brought new heroes that actually have to force heroes like katsu and dorinthia who are very aggressive mm. to change they have to change their play style up now after looking at some of the cards from illusionist because they can't possibly be able to deal with what illusionist has to do um so they have to change the strategy up so now that they're changing their strategy up it then brings the characters that couldn't deal with their strategy to now go actually you know what some of these tools that probably didn't work anymore now start to work a little bit more now so in other words i really want to get back on the viscerai train and get him figured out plus as well some of those some of the new cards he got was also it had been really helpful but yeah i i i want to play viscerai so levia awesome reiner beautiful but man i've got to i've got to get viscerai, viscerai at heart man. yeah man big time big time um and on that note my my favorite card for a couple of reasons um, from the new spoilers is actually Courageous Steelhand Ooh. and that is a, a, an attack reaction for warriors and it it it's a bit like Iron Song response but it works on attack actions rather than weapons why so do you like that again, card, it's, Simon? Well, that's, a, that's a very good question <laughs> Harry, very um, I love that card because it was the card the UK uh, Flesh and Blood community were given to uh, spoil as a preview partner for Legend Story Studios, Beautiful. so we were we were very honoured to be approached, uh, and thank you to Sasha from Legend Story Studios for reaching out and uh, and offering us this. Uh, just you know, how it's, amazing it's awesome. So, and to be honest with to be honest, that it's a testament like to yourself, Simon, of being able to be such a driving force in the community and in, in Facebook and on Discord. So the fact that he recognised that with people like you and definitely other people in the scene, um, you know, shout out to Adam and um, Jason and uh, and Fabio and, Fabio. and Dyson and mm. yeah, all the mods of the big groups that we're we're pushing the community with as well. Yeah, all 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 that work, even the guys that come out in uh, in in Facebook and just you know and, and show up with the comments and posts and doing all that. You know, it's it's a testament, really, of um, all the great work that all of you guys have done. So, uh, yay! Just, it <laughs> well was done. amazing, and this, I tell you what, the stress of knowing for the whole weekend that it was going to be a light warrior coming out, um, oh, and not being able to tell anyone, of course, uh, and not being able to tell anyone was uh, terrifying and extremely exciting at the same time. Yeah, I never um, thought about that. That you knew the, you must have known the the class that was coming out before it was officially announced, right? Well, I'm glad it wasn't noticed, but I I went completely quiet on the uh, spoiler channel on my Discord <laughs> because I couldn't. I just, I'm I'm a terrible liar, so I just chose not to interact instead. You should have um, got in there and got some free prediction points. Oh, oh, yeah. no, no, absolutely. Not. I think like warrior for no reason. Not. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm 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 glad we managed to do something a little bit nice and and you know tease it from a couple of days out and uh, and people the response we got on the Discord and the Facebook was was amazing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just having that opportunity. Thank you, Legend Story Studios, and thank you for recognizing what we feel uh, at Push the Point Podcast. We feel is an amazing community full of amazing people. And it's just growing every day. It's a pleasure to watch it grow and and to get new people into the game. And honestly, every one of you has just been phenomenally interactive and phenomenally kind to new members. And uh, yeah, thank you. Awesome. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a fantastic community to to join and be part of. And uh, a lot of that's thanks to 
the good, great moderation, great uh, communication. People are always so supportive of each other. Um, yeah, like as a as a content creator, people are always there and um, encouraging you to create new content, watching your content, and being really positive about it. And and uh, Hamish, I'm sure you, as you, as you know when, and as you said earlier, I think when when people compliment you on the work that you're doing that is what drives you forward to create more yeah uh, and just having that supportive community behind us is what makes making content so much fun and that's one of the reasons why we do this podcast because it's so fun and because you guys have been really supportive in in us doing this so again a huge thank you for that that's a lie i do it so i can get pissed yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's the the uh, the, the side you know you know you, you, know you can joking. do that uh, yeah. <laughs> outside of the context of a podcast don't you dare well. take that beer away <laughs> so talking about an amazing community uh i'm gonna let trip introduce the next segment uh because yes so it's it, the uh interview is that correct that's the next correct. it is now <laughs> yes <laughs> it is now we've decided <laughs> so um i want to just introduce the segment which is that we have done an interview with an amazing member of our community uh, i'm sure if you've been on the uk discord for any amount of time you're aware of shingo uh, who is the first uk player to reach 1000 experience points on the lss uh, leaderboard and not just that has been a fantastic ambassador for the game um he got to the last eight i believe of the um, Red Riot Games Classic Constructor Tournament, you know, that the, going up against some of the best players in the world, and he's been consistently good, uh, consistently playing the game and good for a very long time. Uh, both me and him, we both started playing at a very similar time, and he's been much more successful than me, so I'm a little bit jealous. Uh, but I uh, <laughs> sat down with Shin to talk about the game, to talk about his grind to reach 1000 experience points and just to generally just shoot the shit over flesh and blood and really talk about what he loves about the game so uh let's play that interview now sharif do you want to introduce yourself to the push the point podcast audience hi guys pleasure to be here um yeah i'm sharif shingo we've probably played i've played way too much fab over the last couple of months and I'm here to give you the summary of that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So for those that don't know, um, Shingo was the f is the first UK player to reach uh, 1,000 experience points on the Flesh and Blood leadership board. Um, and I'm sure you've probably, if you're a regular player of Flesh and Blood, no matter what country you're from, you've probably played against him at some point. He's been doing the grind, um, getting those XP in, and it's... Uh, it's paid off. So, Shin, I wanted to ask you the first question is, how did it feel um, reaching 1000 experience on the leaderboard? It was a very satisfying feeling. It was a weight off my shoulders. And, you know, when you do a lot to reach a specific goal or milestone, when you actually reach it, it's such a relief. And you're just like, I'm done. I've attained that. And now I can move on with my life. Because... <laughs> In a way, the grind was just that, a grind that just took everything, and it was my main focus. Like, I would go to bed thinking, what events do I have next, and how many wins do I want to kind of get the XP that I need to get to a 1,000? And when I got there, there was a pure moment of, finally, it's done. Um, interestingly, you would think that my next reaction is, now I can take a break, but the very next day, I was already playing another event. So it's it's just, it felt like a weight was lifted, but nothing really changed at the end either. Yeah, the grind, it feels like the grind never stops. Um, it goes beyond just like reaching that arbitrary number. And it's like, you clearly love the game and, you know, you just want to play, play games even though yeah. you've reached that goal. No, that's exactly it. It's like, I, fin I reached the goal and then I was like, well, I still want to play. But now there is the added benefit that I can play other decks that I don't normally play. I don't have to be as competitive or as tryhard. And I don't have to really mess up my sleeping pattern to play. So I am happy about that. Well, touching on that, um, I, can you tell us a bit about the, the grind? Because obviously now you're at a point where you've, you've succeeded. You've reached that big goal. But were there any moments 
um, you know, like we're talking like two or 300 experience points in the past here where you thought this is too much or did you ever feel about giving up? Um, I don't think I ever felt like giving up because as you said, part of it was just playing the game and having fun. And there was never a, oh, I'm going to stop now. It's just not worth it. However, there are times where I thought this is not healthy. I'm playing too much. Like there were some weekends where over the span of Friday to Sunday, I was playing nine events. And I was just like, that is crazy. And it does become like almost all consuming in how much you start like thinking. And, you know, I still have, I'm lucky enough to still have a full time job. And I didn't want to slack on the job. So I was, it was like other things in my life that were taking a backseat, like sleeping or other hobbies or stuff like that. So it was definitely um, a slog for a while. Never felt like giving up, but there are moments where I got really frustrated because, again, be, uh, skirmish season was really interesting because you had the 6 XP modifier, right? And I, it doesn't sound like much because it's just double armory, but 6 XP per win is actually huge when you're trying to get to 1,000. So I was putting a lot of pressure on myself during skirmishes to try and get a lot of wins just so that you can have these huge jumps. And when you actually look at my XP, I think there was a weekend uh, where I played a lot of skirmishes and I jumped like 100 plus points in just one weekend. So and you, so when... Yeah, it... so you're really like playing tons of events in one day. Like you must have mm -hmm. played, in terms of the number of games you must have played in that stretch of time, it must have been pretty intense um, doing I... that. I actually started tracking my games towards the end just to have an idea of my win rates and things. And a typical day during skirmish season was like 15 games. Wow. Um, and, you know, when you get into a, when you get into a stretch of bad luck, because at the end of the day, it's a card game. Luck is involved. You're not going to win everything. Even if you play perfectly, your deck and variants are not going to be nice to you. And you get into these stretches where you don't get any wins. And it's incredibly frustrating because you want to change decks, but that's not the solution because you know your deck best. That's the one you pilot the best. And then at the end of the day, it's not like you can play more games to kind of like fix the issue. Is the day is done, the XP is gone, and now you have to move on to the next day. Mm. So in, in terms of, um, you, you touched upon this earlier where you said that, you know, now that the grind is over, you, you do have the opportunity to try out some different decks. But, uh, well, I know for a fact that you mostly, I mean, I've, I've, played, I've played against you a fair, fair number of times and uh, you, you mostly stuck with Dorinthia. I know you tried out Ira a couple of times, but the, the vast majority of games that we played, at least, you, you were playing as Dorinthia. Um, but it, did, did you try any other heroes? Well, I, I know you tried Ira, but... but it seemed that you eventually you you stuck with Dorinthia, you stuck with that um, tall warrior kind of build. But was there a reason you decided to stick with Dorinthia? Um, and what is it about that deck that you particularly enjoy playing? So I, when I was looking at the pool of WTR when the game was coming out in the UK, Dorinthia like just called to me, and it was mostly the bluffing nature and the being able to hide information. And, at, and playing it during the reaction phase, right? It's doing something and you could completely bluff your hand and pretend you have something or you don't, and the other person has to respond without having the full knowledge of your hand. And I really like that mental warfare aspect of the game. So I started off with Dorinthia, but actually I used a deck tech video from Ravwen where he uh, shows you, he has great beginners lists. And the first list, or they weren't really for beginners, but they use a lot of common and rare. So beginners could use these deck decks. And the first list for warrior he had was this go wide warrior. And I just started playing it with six hit and runs and six shunts. I actually remember that deck list <laughs> quite well. And the game was still new in the UK. So our deck lists weren't really polished or optimized. And so the deck worked and it was great fun. Um, and then I went to a skirmish where you had a lot more deck lists from a lot uh, more optimal countries, such as the US who had the game for longer. And I just got demolished by a tall warrior and demolished by Dante's Ira. Like, I, I do want to shout out Dante because part of the grind is like meeting Dante five times a week to have a match. <laughs> um, 
And he's a great guy, and he pilots Ira so well. Um, and it's just, you learn how to play against Ira, you learn how to play against Tal Dorinthia, and you just kind of, it becomes obvious that these decks are the more competitive variants, shall we call them? So I then went to Tal Dorinthia to kind of get better at it, and I really still like the gameplay a lot. And I was still losing to Ira's, so I was like, you know what, let me try Ira to at least get to know how she plays and kind of understand how an Ira person feels playing against me. And that was really useful, right? Because I knew how to play against Warrior, because I know most of the cards in their hand and how they're, they're thinking. And this allowed me to kind of learn how to play Ira. And it was always nice to kind of disconnect from Warrior and take a break from it from time to time if I was getting overwhelmed or if I played a lot of Warrior. I also tried my hand at Kano, but no one saw that. That was part of like more testing games. And I just cannot get the hang of Kano. There's too much happening. I, I'm too big of a gambler when I play Kano. I'm always like, you know, if I have four reds, I'll still be like, pitch three reds to Kano blind. Let's see what happens. <laughs> uh, doesn't wow. really work for me, it's but I tried know. different things. It's good decks. to know that you're a secret Kano player. I would never have known that. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a, such a betrayer taking up the Kano. <laughs> well, you want to try other decks just to know what it feels like when they play against you, right? It's all about yeah, understanding exactly. what the other deck is capable of. Um, and it's so, that, that ira Dorinthia matchup is, I, I, I'd say it, it has kind of, the skirmish season has been quite defined by that there has been other decks but it, it's really been those two at the, the forefront so that was one of the things i found really interesting is when i started playing it was around january i think and people didn't know how to play against warrior you know the breakpoints weren't as well known by people people were unsure how to block and so on and then little by little people learn how to play and it was very interesting to see how my playstyle had to evolve around this and had to become uh, more bluff oriented. Like there are times now where I'll swing when I have nothing in hand and I'll try to represent it by pitching a specific color or the other way. If I have something in hand, I'll pitch a red so that they don't think, oh, he has two resources floating. There's definitely a route coming or something like this. And so it was really fun to see how the gameplay evolved with people getting better around us. And I do also, so I did shout, shout out Dante, but I do also want to shout out a couple more people, if you don't mind. Uh, Tolerian Dropout Rob is a great warrior player and seeing him play has definitely influenced me and in my deck. Like I have one card I love in my deck and you've seen it, is the yeah, Command and Conquer. <laughs> I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> And that Command and Conquer was actually from Rob's list. He played it on stream. I love the idea of keeping some wide aspects to Tal Dorinthia. And that card stuck to the deck. And then there's the whole UK community that I really need to shout out, which in includes you. But it also includes Simon, Dyson, Pierce, Jason. A lot of great players with who, like, just talking to you guys after every event, going through plays, going through heroes just help me understand the game better and kind of like help me decide what to do and who to play and how to play. And also you were all really supportive with the grind to a thousand. And I never felt like there was any bad blood or bad competition. It's like everyone wanted to compete. Everyone wanted to get better. And I'm really happy that at this stage, I think our level in the UK is quite high and I'm quite proud of that. Yeah, I completely agree. I, I I think the standard in I mean we I remember we both played in that um early starter deck uh tournament that Simon and James uh Berham set up, mm -hmm. I believe. And it, it's just amazing to think how the UK scene has um progressed since that point. And and like you said, the quality is just grown and grown and grown. We've got a really good mix of um kind of like deck builder type players, like um players that are looking to to just pilot a deck as well as possible like really sticking with one deck and others that like to switch it up um crazy people that want to play cav dean <laughs> at skirmish <laughs> events but are getting wins of it as well and i think from i i can certainly say from the uk discord point of view um it was it was just amazing to watch you climb that leaderboard and like you said it wasn't 
it didn't feel like um, we, we were just really excited to see you go up and up and up on that leaderboard and to, you know, overtaking all those New Zealand players, all those American players, because you've got there before a, a large number of players who've been playing the game for a really long period of time because you put the work in. And it, it's really been it's been really great to see that a UK player has been one of the first people to to reach that goal. And it, and it is an, an impressive goal. So I, I wanted to, um, to, to, to to wrap it up and just to finish with, um, so you, you did touch on this earlier. And, and I mean, you've said already that you won't be taking a break from FAB. So I think rather than, than saying, what is your plan now? I, I'd like to ask you what you're really excited about, about Monarch, the, the next set that's coming out and, and, and what you're looking forward to playing. Are there any cards you've seen that you really like the look of uh, or anything about Monarch that you're just really excited about? So in my mind, there is no questions. Definitely excited about Bolton, the light warrior. It's like I said, at heart, I'm a wide warrior player, right? And when I saw Bolton, he just resonated with me. He is, or at least I think he is a great wide warrior. And he has a lot of weapons in his arsenal, pardon the pun. He has a lot of tricks up his sleeves to really go wide and all the new cards seem to indicate that he will have a lot he will play very differently to Dorinthia, which is really interesting to me because I really like the warrior class I like the the theme behind it and so on so having this different hero that does play drastically in a different manner makes it really interesting so I'm really excited for that and I don't think any of his cards specifically jump to me even though was it um, I think it was like Courageous Steel Hand, right? That's the attack reaction, yeah. Courageous Steel Hand is a, if you've charged this turn, target attack gains plus three. And it's an attack reaction that goes on any target attack gains plus three. It's not just your weapon. And that was always something with Warrior, is that you had all these attack reactions that you could put on your weapons, but you only really had Razor Reflex to put on an attack action card. And having this new attack reaction that caused the same as iron song response but without the reprise that you can put on an attack canes plus three is just very interesting and i'm really looking forward to that and there's all the new mechanics that come with it like i'm really curious how charge the soul and everything like that will work i'm obviously really curious how blood deaths and banishing and then apart from warrior i'm also really liking the design idea of allies and having well, they call them allies. I'm thinking of them more as minions, you know, to, to have their own life points that can attack. So there's a lot of things in Monarch I'm actually really excited about. And I know that some people in the UK Discord have already started uh, deck brewing and uh, trying things. But I'm waiting for the whole card pool to come out and all the e heroes to be announced before doing anything like that. Yeah, I think that's a I think that's a good idea. It is it is really fun and it's really tempting to get stuck in. Um, and I, I super respect. I, I we both know who you're talking about. <laughs> <who's building laughs> the deck. Um, uh, and it's really cool to see that and see someone summon uh, plasma fat <laughs> on TTS for the first time. Um, an excellent choice of picking uh, the card that Simon Denning revealed as your one of the most exciting cards you've seen so far, which yeah. is the Courageous Steel Hand. So ties us very nicely back into the podcast. Um, Shin, uh, Shin, it's been a, a, a pleasure talking to you. Um, again, congratulations on 1000 XP and, and thanks for being uh, for being here and being on the podcast and talking um, uh, about your experience and your experience with Dorinthia, your experience with reaching that goal. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me. It was my pleasure and I'll see you around. See you around. Uh, you've only had one beer, right? Two. No, three. Two. Okay. I had one before we started. but I had one for dinner. <laughs> As dinner, or with dinner. <laughs> yeah, I had a I had a beer for dinner. Oh, so you got Ooh, a nice. Brewdog Pale Ale. Planet Pale, yeah, it's a it's an extra pale ale by Brewdog, four and a half percent, and it is lovely and light and sessionable. 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 Mm. Sessionable. Do you uh do you go? Are you a bit of a beer uh, connoisseur? I wouldn't go that far, but I do like to uh try different beers and uh across the spectrum from sort of light to dark beers and see what's good at the time yeah well you've got the mustache right to make you look like a beer connoisseur <laughs> so this is a big revelation this week i'm quite surprised how the discord uh 
responded to <laughs> news that I have a facial hair for one and a moustache for two. Oh, wow. Um, so we noticed that there were, on the new spoiler cards for The Light Warrior, there were a couple of characters who had outstanding facial hair features. Mm. Um, and I drew comparisons to my own moustache uh, and someone asked me to prove it so i posted a photo of my mustache and it caused chaos for about 10 minutes it was great oh man yeah. when i first saw you on that mustache i have to say i was like oh man how how did i find such a gentleman yeah it's taken it's, it's taken impressive. on a persona of its own i must admit and uh i feel kind of like left out because dan you've got like you know, you got a cool man bun going yeah, on, right? Yeah, I've I've got I've got big hair, so if anyone's wondering what I look like, I'm I'm freshly shaven, uh, for for sure. I'm I'm not capable of growing a mustache. I've tried and it's failed m many times, <laughs> but I do have a lot of hair. So I'm currently sporting a uh, quite an impressive man bun because I've not had a haircut now in in over a year uh, since the start of lockdown. I've I've not braved the hairdressers, but even in the best of times, I'd probably only be getting it cut once a year, <laughs> twice a year, maybe. Uh, so yeah, big, big hair. That's my uh, that's my main feature. <laughs> I look like someone that steals hubcaps. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you have got to pay for that first edition Monarch somehow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got loads of hubcaps for sale. <laughs> Cold anyway. foil hubcaps. Cold foil hubcaps. Yeah. <laughs> First edition, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great interview, by the way. That was awesome. Thanks. I uh, really enjoyed it. And Shingo is a fantastic uh, interviewee. Uh, I, I was just going to say, I, I touched upon it before we um, did the interview, but uh, we both played in this uh, well, uh, Flesh and Blood Welcome Deck event. And uh, I was looking back at this after I did the interview with Shin and the people that were in that event uh it was amazing like we had dante we had shin uh simon i think you played i think I've, I, don't, I don't know if you played but you helped organize it with james yeah you know, with Berem, with yeah Berem. we organized it which was incredible and then we had, had people like slide uh, yeah slide mo s s4s which is um sam sam um, ewan yeah a very a very very good ira player um uh and i was just <laughs> very amazed that all these well-known players that played in that little star deck tournament but it just shows again like we were saying about the importance of the discord and putting on events like that for people to get into the game and now some of those players are well two two of those players are thousand xp first in their country so that was pretty cool so it was really interesting to look back at that event and be like i definitely beat shin in that one i'll just say <laughs> he's beaten me many times since but i beat him in that one nice <laughs> um so are we what's our next little bit is it are we are we showcasing another um find Owls library snippet so i yeah i don't feel i've had enough of dan Tripp's voice in my life at the no. moment so i think we're gonna cut to a, a snippet of dan's newest video um and again for your listening pleasure oh yeah here we go in the unknown world he walked for many days seeking out ancient creatures known as Embra, creatures whose power could give them victory. The land was strange, ethereal, jagged edges and blood-stained wastes. The land itself altered itself around them with every breath, like the land of Arya but at high speed. As they walked, the darkness grew deeper and murkier. A shadow fell around them, and soon that shadow became a true darkness. They were blind and deaf, but Chain stood still, waiting. As a figure appeared, ashen mist and wrought gold with dark wings, the creature known as Ursa promised Chain the power he needed. With it, he could destroy his enemies and free his people from the tyranny of Solana. And in return, the creature asked for just one thing, that Chain would be bound to the creature, a conduit, an emissary of void. Chain felt the power flow through him, but he knew that he must now act as an apostle for the shadow and spread the darkness across Wraith, else Ursa would take from him his power and likely his life too. One wrong move and Chain's soul may be lost forever. 
And uh, this is episode two, the Dan Trip episode. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I sincerely apologize to everyone for having to listen to my voice for so long. No, you got uh, your your voice is your voice is magic. Your voice is almost as magical as the mustache of Simon. <laughs> well that, that that's a that's a compliment and a half. There you go. Uh, so what else? What else have we got in the grapevine? So I think w- what we were gonna finish on today mm. uh, was just a, a look a, a look at the UK versus USA international team event which occurred um, recently yeah, last weekend in fact and um, one thank you to Red Right Games who have continued to show that their um, imaginative uh, events are drawing people in and, and getting people in interacting with the game they had a, an awesome facebook stream uh, with people like uh, dante and kieran from session blood commentating on the games uh, they came up with a way of uh, of structuring a team event so that we had um on the saturday it was uk versus usa and on the sunday it was uh, singapore versus canada so again like the the teams that were involved were awesome and it was an awesome event to be a part of and the way they structured the event so we had two teams of five players facing off against each other but it was a sort of winner stays on so you submitted your orders and deck uh, Um, lists before the event and then player one played player one on the other team and the winner stays on and then you work your way through the five players uh, and the team who were left standing at the end won very Um, cool and yeah it was it was awesome to be a part of again i came up first for the uk and uh i won one game lost one game so but who did I you beat be, uh I, I beat tellerian dropouts rob cycle oh who, thank um, it, he's a he's a banging he's a good player. player very very good player yeah. we had a great match um i really enjoyed that match actually it went it went long and uh the, ne- the next game wasn't quite as close i played um philly shades uh, brendan who who runs the uh, main international discord and he runs the fab gauntlet events and uh, i got blown out in two turns with a with a steel blade supremacy turn uh, with and then a twinning blade turn that just completely rocked me and i couldn't really recover oh, so man. um he finished me off with a nine song determination uh, and that left me for dead really <sighs> so but yeah a great event to be a part of and being in it I probably didn't appreciate it as much as you guys did watching from the outside. I know Dan Dan was very active in the chat afterwards. So. <laughs> well, so I'll give you a bit of context, right? So uh, I, the, I, I had a prior engagement um, and, and Shin was very, very, very nice. And there, there was many people that were that were wanted to play when we couldn't fit everyone in. Uh, uh, but unfortunately, I wasn't able to play in the tournament because uh, I was meeting up with some friends. Um, so I was about four Aperol spritzes down, um, what trying to, and I was sitting in a friend's garden up in Finsbury Park, uh, with a blanket on to stay, to stay warm. And underneath the blanket, I had my, my phone <laughs> <laughs> trying to watch these games while everyone was chatting around me, uh, and uh, posting stuff in the the comments I, I i distinctly remember simon playing push the point and i the highlight of my my life yeah. seeing you play that card was it was fantastic and then i was traveling home i had about two percent left on my my phone try to stream facebook on the the london underground so i was getting snippets of shin's games i saw him play an amazing steel blade supremacy turn which i think completely blew up uh i think he beat uh Fiddy uh in in when he played up against him so he got one back for us with a with amazing steel blade supremacy turn played a lovely twinning blade as well so he got the the twinning blade revenge too which was really good um oh but it was just every every minute traveling back i was just trying to any minute of any time i could get signal on a on the train i was like streaming in trying to see what was going on (laughs) and i was almost watching it in stop motion these uh, these games try to work out and i didn't even the the, the game might have took, taken place an hour ago and i was only just getting the stream coming through to my phone but it was <laughs> okay. absolutely fantastic a completely bizarre way to watch a live stream but it 
I did get me very invested, as you probably saw in the chat. Yeah. Uh, but it was absolutely, it was fantastic, and um, the the Americans they did take it in the end, Boo. but we re we really took them to the. It was not a a blowout by any means. Uh, it was pretty close, and we we basically came up against this. Uh, and I want to give fair fair credit to to the the player. Um, maybe Simon knows who it was. He was playing Bravo played a really interesting bravo blitz deck with um plunder run in there which i thought was very interesting uh, uh it yeah was i think it was i think it was steven playing bravo um and uh he took down our third, uh, fourth place player who was finbar playing wizard and our last place player who was um craig playing ira um and when he came out against ira he he did manage to get the towering titan out turn one oh, and uh man. i know and it, it was a big it was a big game um but all credit to both players i think shin shin handled the responsibility of recruiting a team extremely well as mm. as we would expect um so desmu or uh steven from red right games got in touch with uh shin and asked him to put a team together um and uh, he approached uh, there were eight or nine of us i think in the in a group and just trying to sort out availability between us and and then once we had a five person team set we then had to try and come up with uh, an uh, an order of uh, heroes that we wanted to play and and who would be the best mix of heroes so yeah just well done to everyone to be representing even on a new game and on a small scale representing your country in that way it felt special to be a part of that event and i think uh red right games are setting the standard at the moment for big scale events and streaming those events around the world and uh, i'd just like to say thank you to them for getting everyone involved awesome yeah absolutely absolutely so just talking about um organized play and i know we spoke about skirmish last week um and uh alan hale has been doing a great job uh, of organized play on an international scale but I just want to give uh, one quick shout out, and I, I hope this is allowed. I might have to check with him before we broadcast this. Um, one big shout out to um, Kieran uh, from Session Blood Podcast, who uh, has now taken up a position as uh, an OP manager, organized play manager at Legend Storage Studios. Congrats, um, man. I think that's a, f I think that's a fantastic appointment. He knows so much about the game and uh those guys now both of them carol and kieran at session blood have both become members of the of the company um and yeah i just want to say thank you to kieran for his input in my development as a player and for the session blood podcast um and i hope they manage to continue that in some way despite uh being members of staff of the company now so thank you kieran oh absolutely and i think you know we're you know we're doing a flesh and blood podcast here right now and session session blood is is fantastic and 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 i i enjoy listening to that podcast and it, and it and it really has helped me get better at the game and those two really know what they're talking about and it's been fantastic to have that as an asset and it's one of those things you can say to new players who are interested in learning the game better is go listen to that podcast i highly recommend watching it well i don't know if there's anything more to say really i yeah, love I the guess... fact that we've we've witnessed the um the descent of hamish through four cans of brooklyn lager now uh, <laughs> to a point where just... he can barely formulate a sentence <laughs> I, I, I have to say um this is probably one of those weird episodes where um there's been so much talk about things that i just unfortunately just haven't managed to be a part of but hoping to be a part of something as um, as time goes on right as things open up it will give me more opportunity to uh and i th i think there's quite a lot of people over in northampton that really haven't managed to really rep northampton like really well um because a lot of them are not that interested into playing on on a webcam or on tts you know there's a huge scene that gets coming out in 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 the northampton area i mean um I know that there's quite a few people from outside the area coming over to Northampton to play because it's uh, it's quite a little hotspot, really. Mm. So as things start to open up a lot more, I'm I'm hoping I can actually get involved in so much more of these games because I feel so envious. I want to play too. But you've you, 
just just before we finish you've hit on a really important point and there are a lot of people in the uk who have come across this game and haven't been able to play it through whatever reason um when we finally exit lockdown whenever that may be i am so hyped even more so than for spoiler season to get back in my local game store i'm very lucky i've got two or three of them locally who are going to be putting on big events uh, underworld games and, and boards and sword hobbies are can spring to mind immediately and i cannot wait to sit down in front of people and play this game and find out who's been missing from our community mm um just because of technology issues or whatever so i can't wait and i can't wait to meet these people who love the game as much as we do boards and swords have got an event coming up on the around about july time right and i i've managed to recruit um my playtesting group um over in ketrin amazing so there's four of us all uh, marching over and despite the so fact that we probably that. don't come online and do as much we've been we've been we've been repping and testing amongst ourselves and keeping an eye on things so uh people know what there's the people that know what's going on but they ain't they ain't showing up online to to show off what they're doing so so as a as a plug then 24th of july uh, boards and sword hobbies in derby it's going to be a, a big classic constructed event maximum 44 people that's what their shop can hold within the limitations of uh social distancing and uh, there is going to be a raffle for all participants to win a box of first edition monarch Ooh, i'm feeling quite lucky uh, do you know why i feel quite lucky because i've just been part of a raffle for nationwide right when you better put money into the savings account and then uh, they do a, they do a draw and you win a hundred pound i want a hundred pound today mm. i'm feeling Jeez. lucky that's a third of a box of Oh, one, trust me. The oh, first thing sorry, I heard, when I oh, saw no, the email. It's, it's a, it's a fifth now. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I did actually say to my wife, "Hey, I won." She was like, "Wait, well, you, well, that's amazing. We're going to put that hundred pounds straight into the savings account." And I was like, "No." <laughs> it's already been spent. <laughs> I'm buying flesh and blood. <laughs> Crucible Unlimited. That's what I was going on. Oh, man, I, I cannot. I generally cannot wait to find out what these um, Discord pictures actually reveal. I mean. I know that Shingo is a galaxy and uh, Dyson does look like a cartoon dragon, but I'm intrigued. Although, actually, I know some of them are on Facebook, but I don't know. Hey. Anyway. Right. I think we should, uh, should we leave it there. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Right. We'll see you in the next episode. Or will you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>